to be honest, it's hard because these things bite you and they bite you and for some strange reason, these guys keep going back. So I suppose uh, getting into combis was, well, made me get into combis was just a V-Dub Volkswagen Link. I started off with a Type 3 wagon and space, needed more space. So it was a obvious choice to go bigger and get a combi. Um, that was to go around Australia about 12 years ago. We bought a 74 camper and found out two weeks before we left to go around Australia, we were pregnant with our first son. At that stage it was a, should we go or should we stay? And my partner was adventurous enough to say, no, bugger this, we're leaving. We're going out, getting out of Sydney and going around Australia. It was so good that I promised that every other time we got pregnant, we'd do the same thing. A lot of my friends when I was growing up were into V-dubs and Beatles and Carmen Gees and Combies and stuff like that. And um, yeah, that's where I first got into them. They were always trying to convert me from Holdens to V-dubs and yeah, I just, like the look of combis, um, really low mainly. Well, to be straight with you, mate, I'm really not a combi guy. I was talked into it from a friend of mine, uh, reluctantly of course, and picked it up because it was apparently cheap. And uh, since then, threw a whole deal of money at it. But uh, as it turned out, it sort of grew on me. But yeah, basically I'm really not a combi person, but it's just been a bit of a project and uh, we've just basically gone on too long. 54 was the first year that combis were uh, made available in Australia unless they were privately imported otherwise. You know, they're great. You go camping, you can go surfing, you can drive it into town. Uh, they're so versatile and, yeah, easy. I wasn't actually looking to buy one, but um, I did see one drive past a house I was living in and sort of fell in love with them at that point in time and thought that would be great fun to restore. You know, I was a little bit bored at the time and uh, thought, hmm, I could enjoy that. Uh, like it, the wife gets a bit sick of it sometimes because it takes so much time and I think she thinks it's better that I'm not down the pub. <laughs> I'm just outside. They generally get annoyed with us uh, doing too much talk about cars. Uh, they'll do the yawn and they'll walk into the other room. And the boys, you know, we're all into it. Our, uh, one of my best mates and I, we're rebuilding an engine together. And uh, rather than go out to the pub, we've hooked up a night, I think it's next week, where we're gonna spend all night with a carton of beer, a bottle of Stoney's and um, rebuild an engine. And that's, that's fun for us. The community does exist in Byron Bay. If I need a part, uh, I've just got to make a couple of calls to a couple of guys, and generally one of us will have the right stuff. Money never change, seems to change hands. It's usually a, a mirror for a windscreen wiper for a badge for a bull bar. It's never, ever a straight cash transaction or a part, unless you go into the combi shops now who are making great money selling to these poor guys. 
I was heading into Lismore because it was a bit of a treat. I was going to get some dinner, bring it home. And I was coming down one of the hills towards Bex Hill and I saw a flash. It was just on dusk. I saw a flash under the right rear wheel uh, or bumper. And the car hesitated just for a second. And I thought, that's a bit funny. So I've pulled over. I've seen another flash, pulled over. And sure enough, the engine's on fire. Smoke pouring out. I've had about 20 cars pass and not one of them stopped. Not one of them stopped. At that stage, I'd spent so much time and energy on this car that I was actually yelling at the car saying, no, you're not gonna beat me, you're not gonna beat me. These things bite you and they bite you and they bite you and they bite you and for some strange reason, these guys keep going back. They are a particular breed and a breed that I don't understand. Uh, like I said, I think they're uh, a special vehicle for special people. It's, um, it's something that you can't shake. I've got out, I vowed to get out of V-dubs a couple of years ago. That's it, got rid of everything. And it was about 18 months later, I had to get another one. Um, I, you can't shake it, cannot shake it. I, I, I can't, I've got to speak for myself. It's definitely a sickness. More of a disease, I think. Something they just can't seem to shake. Because the guys that I know have got these things, not only have one, they've got 17. What keeps me interested is, I suppose, is um, that smile, that little bit of fun, that, um, that uh, accomplishment by building a motor and getting an old car running. Uh, everyone's got something that's a challenge. Mine, I suppose, is that's one of my challenges. Um, and I, I love to get a massive sense of accomplishment by finishing it. This particular girl we found in a shed in the back of um, Skinner Shoot, which is a place out the back of Byron. It, it was basically rusted from the ground up. It uh, was very rough when we found her. And from that point on, we blasted it bare metal. Over three years is basically what it took to get it to what it was today. Rather than do this dig it up and drive it kind of rough machines, I decided I wanted one to look like it was dipped in paint. Something nice, original, yet drivable. This is a 54 model. It's um, different to all the other split screen combis. It's uh, what they call a barn door. It's not a barn door because of the side doors, but because of the engine lid. And it's got no overhang here for fresh air intakes. It's, you know, you can see it's just straight up to the windscreen. Um, it's also got a different dash and uh, set out a... Uh, it's a 57 model, Type 2, I believe. Um, uh, the history of the car, it's lived its life in Coonabarra brand, the little area that I found it, and it was the original V-Dub distributor's personal car, their family car. And I've traced it down by finding a name on the inside of one of the doors that had been replaced, and I traced the family to Grafton, and I have spoken to the son who learned to drive in this car, who is now 60-odd years old or more, so eventually I'll take it down and show him some photos but and see what he thinks of it at this point in time. It'd be very different to what he remembers, I dare say. I've got a car at the top there, it's a 1965 uh, 11 window split windscreen van. It's a wreck at the moment, it is absolutely hollow, it doesn't have a thing, but there's a challenge with getting that on the road. Yeah, pretty much do everything, all the mechanical stuff on them and bodywork and yeah, um, I'm mean, into the, the rat look combi where it's just like it's coming out of a paddock on the outside pretty much and and uh, so yeah the bodywork repairs like you know trying to blend into old stuff so it doesn't have to be perfect. As you can see here I've got the bank of combis, there's another mate Gaz, he's got the Beatles, there's another mate Benny, he's got um, a lot of split parts. So uh, the community exists strongly in Byron Bay, uh, of course it's iconic for the area. We catch up um, now as friends, not just on combi stuff, but you know, we've all got kids that have come up together. You know, we hook up down at parks and things and generally it's an excuse to get the cars out and just catch up. Um, some people um, have got fish, I've got cars. I've, I suppose I've been into them for about 12 years, yeah, uh, 13, 14 years in the Volkswagens. Yeah, 14 years. I'm actually a boat person. I'd rather get into boats. I used to build boats, so this is a complete left of centre for me. You know, like totally, I've never been a car person. 
but I, uh, I must admit I have changed a bit. I do, I'd buy another one for sure. I'm looking to buy more, just because I, I like them. Basically, I'm not obsessed. As silly as that sounds, but I'm not obsessed. But I do enjoy them. I think it'll always be mechanical sort of stuff I'm into, because I've always been into that. Just I like the look of them the best, and I've got a family so I can take them with me. I like the odd sort of cars, you know, yeah, a bit different. The business I'm running is um, fast, high-paced, it's stressful. Everything is now, and from 6.30 in the morning till 5.30 at night, it's now, it's now, it's now. I don't have lunch, I don't stop for breaks. It's, it's fairly high-paced. High if I'm driving a fast car at the end of that day, I'm getting home and I'm still fast paced. Driving that 1974 single cab ute combi slows me down just enough and gives me a good enough smile that that, that trip that was 15 minutes in a Hilux might be 25 minutes, 20 minutes in a combi, but I'm smiling when I get home. And that's worth every second. As long as I don't catch fire.